Check one, two. Oh, there we are. Hey, everybody. Hey, Morgan. I'm going to assume you guys are smiling. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. I can see Susan is smiling. It's so great to see all of your eyes in here. And um, I, I usually do the introductions for those of you. Is it, has anybody never been here before? Is it the first time for anybody? Oh, a couple of people. Wow. That's awesome. So I'm the program director, and um, I give myself a gig here every now and again. And uh, I usually do the introduction, so I'm introducing myself. It's hard to introduce yourself. I don't know what to say about myself. I'm a hypochondriac, um, which is hard right now. <laughs> You're doing great, Morgan. Keep going. <laughs> this is my husband. Badly need of a haircut. He's afraid of barbers right now, as you can see. I'm overcoming it <laughs> soon. Um, so we, uh, we're Fiddle and Dave and Morgan, and we've been playing together for about 30 years. Um, we've been together for 30 years, playing music the whole time, and um, we're going to do a bunch of stuff for you here. So we, we play a lot of like old-time Appalachian stuff, world music, and um, we've been writing quite a bit. That was the nice thing about the first part of Isolation. It was actually pretty artist-friendly. Art, artist um, a lot of painters, poets, and music. Uh, I see John and Brenda here, poets, and I, some beautiful poetry came out of your home. Um, and so we're going to play some of the stuff we did wrote during quarantine, some old-time stuff that we've learned recently. Um, this is actually one that we, we're going to start off with a John Reichman tune. John Reichman's a fiddle uh, mandolin player, and he writes old-time music. You can have new old-time music. And he writes these beautiful contemporary tunes in the style of the Appalachian style. Uh, they're usually, you can sort of tell they're contemporary, and this one's called Salt Spring. Is that right? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> That's new old time for you, John Reichman. Um, 
Do you want to introduce this one? Uh, oh, hi, I'm Dave. I'm uh, the other half of the group, Morgan's husband and fiddle player. And uh, this next song uh, I wrote myself uh, the day after the 2016 election. Um, it's called uh, Wolves Are in the Barn. She's unmasking, folks. It's my mouth. She's been unmasked. This is the first time I've taken my mask off in a place with a people and indoors and however long it's been. But you guys are way back there. And thank you for wearing your mask so we can do this.
Thank you. And that uh, tune was called Shaking Down the Acorns, the fast tune at the end. Mm -hmm. Shaking down the acorns, shaking down the acorns. We didn't sing it, though, <laughs> until just now. If you're going to see Dave and I looking at each other a lot because with these old fiddle tunes, there's really no amount of times that we know that we're going to play them. So it's all about sort of like, you know, is this the last time? And at uh -huh. old time jam sessions, someone will lift their leg. Whoever called the tune will lift their foot, and that's how you know that's the end of the tune. It's a little, tr if you ever go to an old time session, you know. Um, so we do a lot of medleys. That was obviously a medley of a song and a, and a, a tune in a song, song tune medley. Um, they don't do that a lot in Appalachian old time, but they do a lot in, in Irish music and Celtic music, which Dave and I uh, have played a lot of throughout the years. Um, we've both been to Ireland quite a few times, um, and uh, it's a great musical culture over there. And we are going to play you a set of Irish tunes now. The first one for Morgan is called Morrison's Jig for Morgan Morrison. Thank you. 
So those are some pretty, I mean, I don't know if any of you listen to Irish music. Those are pretty standard tunes that you would hear uh, at the pub. Um, I think we kind of put that medley together, though. That's not a standard medley. They do have standard medleys, too. Um, and that was, let's see, Morrison's Jig. Um, last one the was Cash Star of Monster. Mm -hmm. Tenpenny Bit and the Star of Monster. They get played a lot. Those Irish scenes get played a lot in America. I don't know about in Ireland, but they're pretty common. Here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, sing this. So, Morgan, is there a virtual aspect to this too? Where, where are there? Yeah, are we there are. People? We are on Facebook and YouTube tonight too. So, you guys are part part of a live broadcast. If that makes it more exciting for you, yeah. It's pretty great. It's great. Actually, it's something um, we'll probably continue to do, um, you know, for those musicians that allow it, even after the um, we have the full house is broadcast these shows, because why not? More people to listen. It's interesting. I mean, I just wanted to, like, mention, you know, this is the first time I've done an indoor show in, what, seven, eight months? I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, and now, look, there's, like, 30 people, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. some people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And we're still here. And you're, you're really processing this, Yeah, right? just processing <laughs> it. It seems like yesterday. <laughs> <coughs> so I wrote this one uh, for my daughter, who's 12. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Being an adult in this time is one thing. Um, it's, it's tough. But being a kid, when this thing first started, she's an only child. She's extremely social, a very sweet person, and um, the isolation was making her really moody, and already 12 is a moody age, and <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, there was moments where she was like, I just want to get this virus, I can't stand you two for another second, so, which I understand. <laughs> 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 um, and so, you know, and there's a lot of things about this time that are rough, you know, it's a lot of division, a lot of fear, of, you know, the pandemic. And so I was feeling very sad about that for her and feeling very protective of her. So I wrote this song uh, for her and her wonderful friends. They're all such great kids. They're all so smart and, and you know, um, compassionate and intelligent. And um, so I wrote this for her and her, her buddies. It's a lullaby of sorts. I hope I remember it. I didn't intend on playing this one a lot. It was really for her, but let's give it a try. Please be patient with Morgan. She has twice as many strings as I do. <laughs> and she's going to tune them. But I'm going to I'm going to be doing some tuning later so watch out Morgan. <laughs> Everything's a competition with you. <laughs> yeah. You think you can take a long time tuning? <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> All right, almost there. Okay, it's good enough. <coughs> I, this is really suspenseful, right? Am I ever going to start playing this song? <coughs> uh, the old one-handed style. <coughs> this is a <coughs> rough time of year for allergies for, for vocals. <coughs> okay.
just before the dawn, just before the dawn. I know it's hard to keep your smile When the ones who made the biggest mess Won't be around to make it right But when I look at all of you I know that it'll be alright Because your path is true Sing along The darkest hour is just before the dawn, just before the dawn, sing along. The darkest hour is just before the dawn, just before the dawn. Thank you. <clears throat> So you write these songs for your kids, and you're like, hey, listen to this song I wrote for you. And they're like, aw, that's nice. Hey, can I go play with? <laughs> I need a new pair of jeans. Um, no, but these kids, these kids are really spectacular, so there's hope yet. Does, do any of you fiddle players out there have trouble with your mask getting caught on your <laughs> chin rest? It's a new <laughs> phenomenon. I like have the chin rest on and I'll go to like stop playing and it'll be like. <laughs> yeah. I'll pull my face off. As if you fiddle players aren't challenged enough. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything's harder with a mask. <clears throat> um, except for catching COVID. That's and robbery. <laughs> yeah, and robberies, that's true. <laughs> Arm robbery. <coughs> all right, all right, bring it back in, Morgan. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to do a medley. As I mentioned before, uh, medleys are kind of more of an of a, in the Irish tradition than the old time, but we're going to do a medley of um, an Irish tune and a couple of old-time tunes. Sounds like a good time to start tuning. Dakota gave me this little tuner that's on my fiddle. I've never <coughs> used one of these before, so it could take longer than normal. Oh, oh boy. It'll take longer, Just but the end, the end result might be better. So, um, Yeah, so the first tune that we're going to play in this medley is one called um, The Mountain Road, which is a lovely old uh, Irish tune. And then we're going to go into one called Five Miles from Town. And we're going to end it with one called Duck River. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, I, um, seriously, though, folks, I'm going to do a lot of tuning. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you're so competitive. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just always has to be center stage. Suddenly you have to tune. This is a really hard instrument to tune. <laughs> Skill. <laughs> yeah, while Morgan's tuning, I'll explain to you that, um, yeah, I'm going to do some different fiddle tunings. And the first one I'm doing right now, I just tuned my G string up to an A. I'm turning this into like a fiddle workshop, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and so I'm tuning my G string up to an A. Classical violins are tuned G, D, A, E, and we call that standard tuning. Um, even though cl in classical Indian music, they actually tune their instruments differently. But uh, so I just went into it. Ooh, we should do a train song. ADD. <laughs> yeah. Much. So 
going to start with the mountain road. So this first tuning is just one of several D, D tunings for the fiddle. They say there's like, there could be, at one point I heard there were as many as 16 different old time fiddle tunings. And my theory on it was that if you had a fiddle way up in the woods for years and years and years and no piano to tune it to, you'd pull it out of the case on different times of the year and it would be in a different tuning <laughs> and you would just go for it. <laughs> Sounds like some mansplaining right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
was a crash. That was a crash. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I forgot there was a third tune in that medley. I'm really sorry. I was really into That's that right. one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we just last minute arranged that. Mm -hmm. Or was that? Who cares, right? <laughs> mm. We're going for casual. That was the train crash <laughs> part. It's we important. just skipped the train song and went straight for the crash. Yeah. No one ever need be nervous on this stage again after that crash. That was... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we didn't do Duck River. That would have been the third one. Um, yeah. But I am going to tune some more. Okay, great. Um, so we're gonna. I'm going to sing you one now, if my if the allergies will allow. Um, we got this song. So this is an old old song called Dink's Dink's tune, and um, uh, the, the field recorder Alan Lomax. Um, he went around the country and, 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 and different parts of the world collecting these old songs, many of which would not be in existence if he hadn't done this. He wasn't the only one. He's one of the more famous ones. And um, he got this song from uh, a, a woman named Dink. And um, she was a servant. She was an um, uh, a, a African-American servant. And um, she had a, a, apparently a lot of songs. And he collected this one. And he left with the intention of coming back and collecting more from her because apparently she just had this huge, you know, a lot of different different songs. And uh, she had died when he came back, um, which is incredibly sad. And But he got this one, and this is a real treasure, and it's, it's been done many different ways. Um, this is our arrangement of it. It's one of those old songs that probably has, you know, 20-plus verses to it, and you whittle it down to the, the ones that, that you love, and um, this is how, how we do it. There's a high note in this one. Oh, we doing dinks? Dinks, yeah. Don't want to kick that off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with the bizarre key. Thank you. 
wish I had listened to what my mama said That I might be sleeping in my feather bed Fare thee well, my honey, fare thee well One of these days, and it won't be long You'll call my name and I'll be gone Just as sure as the birds flying high above, life ain't worth living without the one you love. Fare thee well, my honey, fare thee well, fare thee well, my honey, fare thee well. Thanks. That stink song. It's a great song. Um, oh, now we're going to do one, a me another medley that we will not crash and burn on. I promise you. Um, this is a, this is a, a I don't know, what, the, what is the first tune? We learned it from an English fiddle player, um, Kevin Burke, but it's not an English tune. Anywho, we don't know what this first tune is. But the second one is one that I wrote, and it's called The Cat Chase.
Thank you. Thanks. That tune was named by an audience person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Morgan was like, oh, I wrote this new tune, but I don't have a name for it. And after a couple nights, somebody was like, the cat chase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, it wasn't a couple nights. It was at that gig. It was at the library in Percival. They came up to me after the, sh- the little concert we threw, and they said, that tune reminds me of when my cats chase each other around. <laughs> So, there you go. Um, so, Sugar on the Board. This is another old-time tune. We, Dave and I hosted an old-time jam here for years um, that we will start up again. Uh, we just haven't done it yet uh, with the virus, but um, everybody's outdoors. Uh, so, you know, they're all doing outdoor jams. But we learned a lot of old time fiddle tunes at these jams so some of what we're playing here tonight we actually just learned from our friends uh, that we invited in here to play music over the years um, this one's called Sugar in the Gourd and I think it's uh, probably a moonshine reference is what I'm guessing fermented you know the sugar in the gourd let's start that over ready Dance on board, put out the fiddle, plate, sugar in the gourd. Ain't nothing better than sugar in the gourd. Ain't nothing better than sugar in the Put out the plate, sugar in the We're going to do one more medley for you, and um, this is a, a, bunch, a bunch of songs and tunes strewn together, and um, you guys are in for a really big treat, because after us, Dakota and Brendan will be up here, and they are so great and just hypnotic together. Um, I saw them play a while back, and I, as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh my God, we got to hear that in the, in the barns, and um, so I'm so glad they're here tonight. So one more for us, and then we'll uh, take a, 
a short intermission. You guys can go outside and pull your mask down and get some fresh air. It's a beautiful evening. And, uh, and then come back and hear, um, and hear Dakota and Brendan. The last tuning here is, I think it's called the Black Mountain Rag tuning or the Hangman's Reel tuning.
rattlesnake, oh rattlesnake, what makes your teeth so white? Been in the bottom all my life, ain't done nothing but bite, bite, ain't done nothing but bite. Groundhog, oh groundhog, what makes your back so brown? It's a wonder I so much. Have a great evening and stay tuned for another great show. Thank you very much.
now I'm, I'm wearing a different hat. Now I'm the program director with a beer. Um, <laughs> this is the perk of being the musician and the program director. I'm on the clock now, by the way, Sarah. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about these two. Uh, like I said, uh, from the first time I heard them play together, I was like, we've got to get them in the barn because their sound is so, it's just so mesmerizing. Um, these two instruments and the way these two play the instruments is just unbelievable. So I'm really excited about this and um, I think you're gonna love this. Uh, please welcome Dakota Carper and Brendan Hearn. start without saying anything but I did too it no, just came out it just yeah. ca I'm sorry swipe that all off we just Way walked better. on
Thanks. Thank you all so much. So this is our first time on a stage together again since February, and we're so happy that we're here with you for it. So thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's our plan to each make one mistake tonight, and that's it. So if you catch it, everything else was intentional. <laughs> I've used mine. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that first tune we played was one called Big Eyed Rabbit, uh, which I'm sure you couldn't have guessed from the lyrics, but um, we're going to play another one for you. This is a, another one from the uh, traditional old-time Appalachian fiddle style uh, called Cumberland Gap. <laughs> so much it's so it's so interesting being like in front of people again <laughs> I feel like it's been a it's been like a long hibernation period you know but maybe instead of like being little bears and being ready <laughs> for hibernation and kind of packing up with berries I feel like instead we 
maybe went went to we got all the toilet paper yeah yeah we like hoarded all this weird stuff and like <laughs> tried to hibernate during a pandemic and woke up just Angry still with bears. a pandemic yeah <laughs> didn't fix anything we're just not tired anymore yeah. i'm still tired <laughs> you're more tired i don't know um Dakota is going to sing a tune, a song called The Blackest Crow now. Um, do you know where you got it? Um, I don't know where well, you got it. Well, I got this, I think, from um, first off of this album, uh, Songs from the Mountain. Uh, Tim O'Brien was singing on mm. it, and it was just this incredible, incredible version. And I kind of grew up listening to that CD over and over and over and over till it wore out. And this was always one that it would come on, and I'd just like – sing my heart out to it there as a little 12 year old you know <laughs> but um it's a beautiful beautiful tune and i can't say that i do it like uh tim o'brien nothing i do when i try and do it like somebody else turns out like i intend it to but this is how i do it so i hope you enjoy it this is kind of one of the first tunes that um brendan and i kind of played together we were at a music festival now two years ago um late in the night kind of felt like this because i can't really see you all i just see this dark darkness out there and was singing this song and this like incredible cello just started coming in and it was like wow where'd that cello come I'm like out in the forest you know camping I was living in the woods at the time <laughs> yeah and this, and this bear comes out. out of the woods yeah. playing a cello yeah. <laughs> I hadn't shaved my face or my hair in <laughs> many moons still yeah. hasn't oh. still haven't <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this is black as crow Staying here, or I was going. 
breast was made of glass wherein you might behold upon my heart your name lies wrote in letters made of gold in so much. Thank you. Oh. You know, we haven't really practiced our banter. We were talking about that right as we walked on the I was thinking stage. that. Like, my social skills are just, I feel inept. Yeah. Man, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, so there's a part of the show, though, that I always try and include, which is a little bit of banjo, or uh, sorry, not banjo jokes. It used to be banjo jokes. It should be banjo jokes. <laughs> Until I met Brendan, now it's cello it's jokes. It's just cello jokes. <laughs> and they're always corny and harmless and stuff, but I harmless. I'd forgotten. <laughs> He's been having a tough time in this isolation. <laughs> He's been thinking about all the jokes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had forgotten about the, ba uh, the sorry. See, it, there it is, out the brain again. The cello jokes. I had forgotten about these cello jokes. And thankfully, uh, this kind young man came up, and he, he reminded me of these cello jokes, and he said, oh, I always look forward to your show and the cello jokes you tell. And I went, oh, no, I forgot to prepare cello jokes. <laughs> so I ran out the door here real quick, right before we got on the stage, and quickly looked up some cello jokes. So I have a couple for you tonight. That's cheating. <laughs> I can't use Google. <laughs> so uh, what, uh, what's this, not what's the difference? What's the same thing? With lightning and a cellist's fingers. Jeez, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> they never strike the same place twice. <laughs> 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 All right. That's good. That's I'm not even mad about that one. <laughs> Other ones I might be mad at. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few more. <laughs> <coughs> this next one is a tune called Coon Dog. Thank you. 
Thanks so much. Wow, I'm sweating now. <laughs> I, the whole time I was thinking of violin jokes or like fiddle jokes, but I, like, I don't have any yet. So I know of a Can joke that includes a violin and a cello, but... Is the punchline the cello? Because I don't want to hear it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I can try and turn it around, but... No, it's not going to work. Yeah. I just know it. So it goes, um, how do you keep your violin from getting stolen? You put it in a cello case. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 like even you know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. drum beat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect these to be good jokes, you know. <laughs> but no, I apologize. As you can tell, Brendan is a phenomenal cello player. I don't know anybody that plays cello like that. Wow. So Thank you. Thank you. This is just to keep him humble because obviously the he's got everything going for him there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm going to have a few more mistakes, I promise. <laughs> like right out of the gate, too, it was. I was like, all right. <laughs> We're going to do, oh, sorry, did you want to intro this? No, no, go for it. Um, we're going to do a tune called um, Obama's March to the White House. Um, I think this was written, it's uh, timely, I know. Um, we wish it was now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was written, I, I think, probably in um, two th uh, 2008, 2009? I don't know if it was 8 or 12. Oh, yeah, I guess I don't know. Um, I think 8. Yeah, that, uh -huh. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but Dakota um, cross tunes for this um, in Calico. Calico. Yeah. Yeah, which um, I believe is one of the tunings that Dave was in earlier, but he yeah, yeah. called it by a different name. Are you still out there, Dave? Can't really see anything. I think he's out. Oh, he's gone. Oh, yeah, that's okay. No. <laughs> I, think he, I think he called it Dead Man's Tuning, right? No, so that's a different thing? one. Okay, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking Hangman's about. Tuning, I think oh, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah, which yeah. was interesting. I hadn't heard it called that, but... Um, it sounded like maybe this, where I'm A, E, A, C sharp, um, calico tuning, is what it's, I call it, you know. The other side of the mountain, I guess they call it hangman's <laughs> tuning. <laughs> <laughs>
so much. How's everyone doing? Doing all right? I think we so I think we sold out tonight. All all 30 seats, is that right? Woo! Yeah. And there's at least a couple people watching. That's a COVID online. triumph right there. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that. All day. It's the little COVID triumphs that are important. I'm actually not proud of this. Now. I thought this one would be a COVID triumph when everything locked down. I had a list of things I would do. And one of them was um, contact, uh, well, recontact Tristan Claridge of Crooked Still, <laughs> if you know him. I think I, I heard of this tune from him, this next one we're about to play. And I was like, I'm going to find out the name of this tune. I promise I will. And now, eight months later, we're performing it. <laughs> and still on our set list, it's a name unknown. I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, so. We were thinking we might just start coming up with names for it and call it a different thing every set. And then as people get to know us and our music, they'll be talking to each other and be like, you know that one tune? And they'll all be talking about the same tune, but you know, not with the same name. They won't know. We won't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is name, name unknown. We don't know what to call it. <laughs> I'm going to find out one day. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> so much we really appreciate this applause I don't think yeah. you have any idea how nice it is to hear applause <laughs> after eight months of online concerts and sitting in your own house playing into a screen and then hearing just crickets after a tune 
and be like, well, I hope somebody out there in the world's watching that. <laughs> it just feels so nice to be applauded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah. hands stinging a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys weren't practicing this whole time. <laughs> We've so been thirty minutes a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, Dave and Morgan were talking ab about how they kind of look at each other from time to time to signal this is the last time. You may see Brendan and I are doing that a lot too, but I'd say we're a lot less practiced than Dave and Morgan. So we don't say like, this is the last time, don't forget. It's more like, what do you think? Should this maybe be the last time? Yeah, there's a whole conversation well, that just happened. Yeah, like let's that try last for a little time, bit yeah. longer. We'll play a little bit more and then check in again every once in a while and just see how the tune's going. Nah, one more time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, at rehearsals too, I'll be like, Dakota, what do you think? Like five, six times on this tune? Like how, how many? And she's like, no, I, I don't want to count. Yeah. I don't want to hear. I refuse I don't want any to of count. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll be over when we stop. <laughs> um, this next song we're going to do is called Rascal Fair. Um, it's a Brad Leftwich um, song. Um, and yeah, it's just really nice. There's some nice little harmonies on it. So. Shouted my soul the first time I saw you by my side. Little then I knew how the story unfold. My heart only told me you were mine. You taught me to love, gave the wings to my soul, made out of fragments of. May burn, I'll never turn for my heart must stay tender, not cold. Move on with 
a heart that is tender, not cold. And now you are gone. I must move on with a heart that is tender, not cold. Thank you. Brendan Hearn. That was good communication on that one. Yeah. I knew what you meant this time. <laughs> don't forget to sing yeah, here. Yeah, don't. Yeah, this is where we come in. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, it's kind of a novel or an interesting thing that you all would come here and sit in chairs and watch us. And not just because of coronavirus, but because old time music traditionally is dance music. So it's, it's very strange to come and watch somebody play dance music. It's like, I don't even know what to compare that to. It's like coming and a feast being laid before you and you watch somebody eat. Like, you're supposed to be partaking in this. You're supposed to be getting up and dancing, but obviously that's beyond uh, possible at this moment. But, you know, speaking of dancing, I saw something interesting. We, of course, are getting all of our information from the internet these days. And I saw about a group forming, uh, lots of virtual groups are happening, musical groups and poetry groups and stuff. And there was a square dancing group forming virtually. I'm in, that's great, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm just trying to picture the do -si dos Are they dancing around the computer or do they put a chair there? and the swing your partner, and I don't even want to imagine how the dips are going, you know. But yeah, so this is square dance music that you're hearing tonight. Uh, take it in your mind home if you're joining that group, and just remember it, this feeling of this music tonight. I so want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is an old time tune called Arkansas Traveler. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. That one hurts my hand every time. Dakota <laughs> takes it faster and faster every time. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> oh, this next one. Um, this one was written by um, a man who lives kind of right in my area. But that, that reminds me of a story first. So I'm going to tell it. So this past January, pre the world blowing up, um, we had this small house concert um, at my place, and Brenda and I were kind of just getting together, putting some shows um, together, and we decided, hey, let's do this house concert. It was uh, early January, and the room we were in was about the size of this stage, I think, and there was 30 people in there. Wow, like, that's crazy. Um, but it was Brendan's first time playing in my hometown, and so we get up there, and not to sound, you know, flippant or anything, but I'm kind of a big deal in my hometown. <laughs> and Her hometown has 400 people. <laughs> that might be an exaggeration. <laughs> 300. <laughs> but, so we play this show and afterwards, everybody comes up, you know, and I'm expecting the congratulations, you're doing great, you sound awesome. And they all want to tell me about how great Brendan is. <laughs> Non-stop. Wow. Anyways, so that just reminded me, speaking of hometown. So this tune was written by a man who's uh, from in my area, not quite my hometown, but just next door to it, uh, Joe Herman. And he wrote this uh, awesome tune called Coyote Howl. And I asked him, uh, Joe, is there you know, any kind of story, like what led you to write this tune? Was there this experience with this coyote that was great? And he was like, no, just ate one of my sheep. So wrote a tune about it. <laughs> So, this is Coyote Howl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
think we have just but one more for you guys, and then we're gonna release you out of this amazing barn that we're playing in. This doesn't <laughs> feel like a barn in any way. It feels <laughs> like the hull of a very expensive ship. <laughs> <laughs> Upside down? Upside down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> But Gravity feels really weird now. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about it too much. It'll fry your brain. Um, but thanks so much to everyone for coming, and thanks to the Barnes of Rose Hill and, and um, Dave and Morgan for having us. This has been amazing and uh, a nice little break from, you know, not having live music all the time. So, um, yeah, it's been, been so great. Um, do you want to announce this last one? I don't know yeah. too much about it. Um, I don't really know too much about it either. This is kind of uh, just one of those tunes that you learn and you play and you love, but you never really learn anything more about it. You know, it's interesting. Some of the uh, songs we've sung tonight are really kind of beautiful, meaningful songs. Um, and I think that there's two categories of music with words. And there's songs, which are these beautiful sets of lyrics that have music supporting them. And then there's uh, songs that are a cool set of music that have some words thrown in. And this is kind of that second case because none of the words really make any sense. Um, who knows what this tune is about, but it's a fun one. So it's one that's called Sail Away Ladies.
Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming out, and thanks to our live audience on Facebook right now, too. And a big thank you to the Barnes of Rose Hill.